Hi, my name is David Larson. I'm on the customer success team for Traceable. And in this video, I want to walk you through how to do VPC mirroring with AWS. Um, first, I just want to start off and explain a little bit about what VPC mirroring is. Um, so VPC mirroring is uh, a deployment option that we have at Traceable. Essentially, we're setting up a, a VPC mirroring interface in your environment and taking a deep copy of the inbound and outbound network traffic. And then using our agent, we're going to push that traffic to the Traceable UI platform um, so that we can tell you interesting things around your API DNA, um, different threats in your environment, and much more. So let's jump in, and uh, I can show you how to go ahead and set this deployment option up. Uh, you'll be provided a CloudFormation template. Uh, the template's going to look very similar to this. Um, there's a number of different parameters and options that we have to fill in here. So I'm just going to quickly walk through uh, what each one is um, and what you want to do for these various options. Um, so for the stack name, this is this is just something uh, internally that you'll use to represent. Um, you could uh, append a QA or a prod uh, label here if it makes sense to do so. Um, next up, we want to uh, let the template know what the load balances load balancers are that we're going to be using here. Um, so these should be the specific load balancers that are part of this VPC. Um, source target groups and source ECS cluster are not required, um, but if your configuration uses those, you can go ahead and input those here. Uh, by default, a uh, M4 uh, xlarge is selected. Um, it's, it's probably best practices to go ahead and uh, keep that default for now. Um, we can always go and adjust that if we need to in the future. Um, the key value is, is really only needed if we are going to uh, troubleshoot. And so just go ahead and select a key value that you have access to and are able to SSH with. Um, now the public for uh, public IP, um, when you enable this option, an elastic address is created and associated with the EC2 instance. Uh, if you do not want to create a, a new elastic IP address, then go ahead and disable this option and choose private subnet from the subnet ID dropdown list. Um, you also want to make sure that your private subnet has access to the internet um, where uh, Traceable's platform will be at. Um, SSH location, uh, change this address to uh, the address where you're going to be SSHing from. Um, VPC ID, the subnet ID, and the VPC CIDR are all information you can pull from your uh, specific VPC details. The Traceable refresh token, uh, if you log into the Traceable UI and you go to the administration section, there's a section for access tokens. Um, you'll just go ahead and copy that token and place it in the template here. Um, and then finally, for naming the environment, uh, this is the naming uh, the name of the environment that will show in the Traceable UI. Um, so you may want you, you may want to differentiate this with QA or production again, uh, where it makes sense. And then same thing for the service name. I would just keep both of those the same. Uh, once you have all that information in there, go ahead and scroll down. You'll acknowledge both of these checkboxes and go ahead and click Create uh, create Stack. Um, this will take about five or six minutes. So for the purpose of this video, I've, I've kind of already went through and done it. Um, in your environment, you'll see here I have a new dropdown, uh, Traffic Mirroring Demo. Um, and I see spans coming in under the traces section. Um, so that's how I know that the deployment option and integration completed. Um, thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, please reach out to us and uh, have a great day.